Welcome to today's episode where we explore the intriguing psychological underpinnings of chaos magic. This modern esoteric practice uniquely leverages the power of belief and reality, claiming to utilize the human mind in innovative ways. Before we dive into today's discussion, I want to emphasize the importance of your support in allowing free education for all on topics in esotericism based on peer-reviewed scholarship. You keep this project alive by contributing through Patreon, PayPal, Coffee, or YouTube memberships. For details on supporting me, visit drandrapuka.com or check the links in my bio cards, info box, and pinned comment. To ensure you never miss out on my latest content, I encourage you to sign up for my newsletter. This way you will always be in the loop, independent of social media algorithms. A huge thank you to everyone who makes academic esoteric literacy possible. Your contribution makes all the difference in the world. Now, let's kick off the symposium. Hello, Symposias. I'm Dr. Angela Puka, Religious Studies PhD, and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic esotericism, paganism, shamanism, and all things occult. A little disclaimer before we start. This episode presents my personal efforts to interpret chaos magic through various psychological theories. It is not suggested that these connections are explicitly recognized or utilized by chaos magicians themselves. Instead, this exploration aims to enrich the theoretical foundation of chaos magic by drawing interesting parallels with established psychological frameworks. This approach may offer new perspectives and perhaps deepen our understanding of the practice. Enjoy! Chaos magic emerged in the late 20th century, pioneered by notable figures such as Peter J. Carroll and Ray Shervin in the United Kingdom. Their seminal works, including Carroll's Libernol and Psychonaute, and Shervin's The Book of Results, provide a foundation for understanding both the philosophy and the practical techniques of chaos magic. This practice is characterized by its experimental and individualistic approach, encouraging practitioners to draw from a diverse array of magical, religious, and esoteric traditions. Unlike more traditional systems, which often adhere strictly to prescribed beliefs, correspondences, and rituals, chaos magic values flexibility and personal efficacy, believing that the magical power resides within. A key concept in chaos magic is the use of beliefs as tools. This notion is pivotal from a psychological perspective, as it suggests that beliefs can be deliberately chosen and discarded to shape reality. This strategic manipulation of beliefs allows practitioners to enhance the effectiveness of their magic by aligning their belief system with their intentions. Chaos magic parallels and extends the theory of constructivism, which posits that our cognitive structures shape how we perceive and understand the world. Originally developed by theorists like Jean Piaget and Lev Vygotsky, this theory is adapted in chaos magic to suggest that these cognitive structures can be deliberately reconfigured to alter one's reality. Also, the impact of expectations on perception, a concept explored by Jérôme Brunner and Leo Postman, is central to chaos magic. Their research demonstrates that anticipated outcomes can significantly influence actual current perceptions. Practitioners of chaos magic harness this principle, setting expectations through rituals and sigils that encode their desires, thus priming their perception to align with their magical intentions. Leon Festinger's theory of cognitive dissonance, which describes the tension that arises from holding conflicting beliefs, is especially interesting in relation to chaos magic, as here practitioners intentionally create and resolve dissonance by aligning their beliefs with their magical goals, often holding two opposing beliefs to provoke a psychological drive towards magical resolution. Sigilization is another essential element in chaos magic that involves encoding intentions into symbols, a process that parallels cognitive encoding where information is transformed for easier mental storage. 
Concentrating on these sigils, particularly in heightened emotional or altered states, can deepen their integration into long-term memory and exalt their subconscious influence on behavior and perception. By focusing on a sigil in an altered state, practitioners believe they can boost its psychological impact. These states increase the subconscious receptivity, allowing the symbolic meaning of the sigil to be more deeply embedded and bypass usual cognitive filters. In chaos magic, the concept of priming and cognitive triggers is exemplified through the use of sigils, which are integral to the magical framework developed by Ossin Osman Spare an influential figure in modern occultism. Spare's philosophy underscores the sigil as not only a tool of magical work, but also as a potent psychological trigger. This perspective aligns closely with the psychological mechanism of priming, where exposure to a stimulus, like a sigil, subtly influences a person's subsequent behaviors and thoughts to align with the embedded intentions of the sigil. Osinos Maspe posited that sigils, by their very design, harness the subconscious mind by bypassing the conscious awareness to enact change. This is akin to the process of priming, a psychological effect well documented by researchers such as John Bark and Tanya Chartrand, who found that subtle exposures can prime individuals to act in ways that align with the primed concept, often without their conscious realization. In the context of chaos magic, sigils are crafted from the desires or intentions of the practitioner and are charged with energy through focus and ritual, embedding these intentions deep within the subconscious. Much like subliminal messages influence subconscious decision-making, sigils operate under the radar of conscious thought, influencing behavior and outcomes aligned with the magician's will. This parallels Sphere's belief in the power of the subconscious to affect reality, a cornerstone of his magical philosophy. He argued that the conscious mind often hinders the magical work with its incessant internal dialogue and societal conditioning. Therefore, sigils help in quieting the conscious mind and activating the much more powerful subconscious. By integrating Spare's insights with contemporary psychological theories, we can see an interesting parallel in the functioning of sigils and the psychological concept of priming. Both involve a preparatory process that sets the mind in a direction that is initially invisible to the conscious observer, but powerful in its ability to influence outcomes. This is particularly evident in rituals or personal practices where the intention set by the sigil becomes manifest in ways that seem to bypass ordinary conscious efforts. Symbolic interactionism, a framework from sociology, provides insights into how individuals attribute meanings to symbols and how these meanings shape behaviors. According to Herbert Bloomer, who coined the term, people act based on the meanings they ascribe to objects, and these meanings are derived from social interaction and modified through interpretation. In the context of chaos magic, a sigil is not just an abstract symbol. It is a conduit of personalized meaning, crafted and understood by the practitioner, influencing their actions in ways that are consistent with the magical intentions they harbor. Mihaly Gizan Mihaly's concept of flow is particularly relevant to chaos magic. Flow is described as a state of complete immersion and optimal performance which is achieved when a person engages in activities that match their skill levels with the challenge at hand. In magical practices, rituals are designed to induce this state, facilitating a profound connection with magical intentions and enhancing the efficacy of the rituals. 
This state of flow can also seg you into altered states of consciousness, where the practitioner experiences enhanced perceptual, emotional, and cognitive processes. Studies by Charles T. Tart have shown that altered states can significantly expand the limits of perception and cognition, potentially altering both the practitioner's inner psychological landscape and external reality. The intersection of quantum consciousness with chaos magic provides a highly speculative yet significant framework for some practitioners to understand how deep psychological states might manifest tangible effects in the physical world. Theories proposed by Stuart Hameroff and Roger Penrose suggest that consciousness may arise from quantum processes within the brain, positing that the mind could influence the physical state at a quantum level. While this theory remains on the speculative fringe of neuroscience and quantum physics, it resonates with the principles of chaos magic, which postulates that the mind can directly affect reality through magical practice. The concept that the mind can influence the body has gained empirical support through the study of psychoneuroimmunology. Pioneering studies by researchers like Robert Ader and Nicholas Cohen have demonstrated that the immune response can be conditioned by psychological stimuli, showing that the brain and immune system are in constant communication. These foundational work suggests that mental states can affect physical health by modulating immune responses, either enhancing or suppressing them. Further research has shown that stress, which is a psychological state, can either suppress or enhance immune function, depending on its duration and intensity. Chronic stress is generally harmful, suppressing immune function and increasing vulnerability to illness. However, acute stressors, the kind likely to be experienced during intense magical workings, can actually prime the immune system, preparing the body to handle challenges. Altered states of consciousness, often pursued in chaos magic through practices such as meditation, trance, or sigil concentration, have been shown to influence psychological functions in ways that promote health. Studies have documented changes in brain activity patterns during meditation, with corresponding effects on the autonomic nervous system, which controls key functions like heart rate and digestion. These changes can lead to reduced stress levels, lower blood pressure, and improved immune function. The implications for chaos magic are profound. By intentionally inducing specific psychological states, practitioners might be able to leverage these mind-body interactions to affect physical health. This is especially relevant in rituals aimed at healing or self-improvement, where the practitioner's focused intention and altered state could directly influence their physiological state. This exploration shows how chaos magic operates not just at a mystical or metaphysical level, but is grounded in an underlying theoretical framework. By mastering these processes, chaos magicians believe that they can harness the power of belief and perception, pushing the boundaries of what is possible and driving significant personal and spiritual development. This is it for today's video. If you watched until this point, leave me a spiral emoji. Now, my dear symposiast, this project of delivering free academic knowledge based on peer-reviewed scholarship can only exist thanks to your support. So if you have the means and want to offer this knowledge to all, please consider supporting my work with a one-off PayPal donation by joining memberships, my inner symposium on Patreon, super thanking me in the comments, or checking out my services at drandrapuka.com. You can book private lectures, tutoring sessions, lectures, courses, commission a video, and much more. All links are in the pinned comment and in the info box. And don't forget to sign up for my newsletter to get to know me better through my personal reflections and ponderings over my academic work and all things esoteric. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that notification bell so that YouTube will always notify you when I upload a new video or I'm live or whatever. Let me know what you thought in the comments and thank you so much for being here. I hope that you stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now. Today we